Welcome back to Numerical Analysis. Uh, it's Friday, uh, April 3rd, and today we're going to talk about higher order approximations in Euler's method. Um, but before we jump into that, uh, let's uh, do a little housekeeping. It's the uh, end of our second week of online instruction, online everything, I guess. And uh, I want to uh, congratulate you guys on uh, hanging on and plugging away and the work you've turned in so far. I've been able to grade some of it, and I'll get to more of it soon. But uh, I know it's difficult, and I know it's uh, uh, not uh, pleasant uh, to do things this way. But uh, uh, good on you for keeping with it, and please keep doing that. Um, we will, uh, we've will. we got, what, three more weeks of classes left? So it's not uh, a whole long time. Uh, and uh, just... Uh, you know, continue plugging along. Let me know if you have questions, and particularly uh, if you haven't been able to turn in a homework that that's already due, um, uh, let send me an email. Tell me what's going on, and I'm sure we can work out something. Um, but don't let much of that slide. It's even more important now since we'd have so little time. You know, actually, no face-to-face -face time, uh, and mostly doing communication by videos and emails. It's even more important that you. Uh, really engage with the homework. So uh, let me know if there are problems with that and we'll try to uh, find a workaround to that and uh, keep on uh, keeping on. So uh, let's talk about uh, uh, Euler's method a little bit more and how we can improve it. Uh, just uh, to remind you, uh, this first slide here is just the basic Euler's method in a nutshell. Uh, you're working with an initial value problem and uh, the basic idea is, you know, after you've gone through a few steps of it, you have collected solution values and uh, the corresponding times. And I'm letting T sub n being, be, denote the, you know, the last computed solution time and X sub n being the last computed solution value. So X sub n would actually be X of T sub n here. And those are our last computed steps. Uh, and uh, the uh, essence of Euler's method is to use those values to complete, compute the next step. All you do is first you advance the time by the time step, uh, delta t here, and then you advance the solution value by approximating the next solution using the first degree Taylor polynomial uh, uh, centered at your previous time value and evaluated at the, the, the current time value. And so this is what that winds up being. And so uh, that basic idea is pretty straightforward. Uh, given a current solution, use the Taylor polynomial of degree one to advance the solution to the next step. And uh, what we're going to explore today is uh, uh, using higher degree Taylor polynomials to possibly get more accuracy in this process. Uh, and when you do this, this is called a higher order Euler method. And so we're going to let D denote the degree of the Taylor polynomial we use, and it'll be bigger than one here. Uh, one just gives you the basic Euler method. We want to see how much improvement we can get by using higher uh, order Taylor polynomials to do that step forward uh, uh, part of the uh, algorithm. So uh, conceptually, the uh, Euler's uh, method doesn't change much. You're still going to have a current time and a current solution value, and then you're going to use a Taylor polynomial to project that forward to the next solution value. The only difference is now it's a degree D Taylor polynomial where D is bigger than 2. So uh, let's uh, first get an idea of what's involved in constructing that degree D Taylor polynomial. Uh, and here I want to do an example where we just look at a degree 2 Taylor polynomial for the ODE we've been working with, that is dx dt is minus x squared plus t. Uh, and we want to center that polynomial at the current you know, time, the last computed time we have, which would be t sub n. So here... Excuse me, here is just the uh, generic form of a second degree Taylor polynomial. It's your function evaluated at the center plus the derivative of the function times t minus t sub n, t sub n being the center, and then half the second derivative evaluated at the center, and then times t minus the center quantity squared. 
So um, note here that uh, at least two of these things are basically already known to us. X of Tn, that just means the solution when T equals Tn. Well, that's our value Xn, we've already computed. And then X prime of Tn, we can get from the ODE, right? Because uh, that tell dx dt is X prime. So X prime of Tn would be dx dt when T is Tn, and of course X is Xn. So we get minus Xn plus T. T, uh, minus xn squared plus tn. So what about that second derivative we need for the quadratic term? Uh, well, you use the ODE, and this is just like we did for our power series solutions. Use the ODE to compute uh, the, the second derivative. So the second derivative of x is the derivative of the first derivative, but the first derivative we know is minus x squared plus t. That's coming from the ODE again. And then uh, just computing that derivative, remembering that x is a function of t, you get minus 2x times dx dt plus 1. And then dx dt itself we can get from the ODE. Remember, dx dt is minus x squared plus t. So we get that and simplify that to get 2x cubed minus 2xt plus 1. And so uh, x double prime evaluated at tn, you're just going to plug in tn for t and xn for x here. And so we get this expression for x double prime of tn. And so now going using those and going all the way back to our generic formula for a degree two Taylor polynomial gives us this. So I've just plugged in uh, x of tn, this is x prime of tn, and then one half x double prime of tn. Now this thing looks complicated, but remember xn and Tn are already known from uh, the, 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 you know, the steps we've already taken. So really the only variable here is T. You'll be able to reduce all these uh, values here to actual numeric values. So let's see how that works. Uh, let's do a degree two Euler's method for this uh, initial value problem we've been working with. And let's use a step size of 0 0.1. That didn't come through here, but that's not 1. That's 0 0.1 there. Um, for step 0, uh, we get our t0 and our x0 values just from the initial condition, right? This tells us that t0 is 0, and when t0 is 0, when time is 0, x is equal to 1. So that tells us that x of 0 is equal to 1. And then we're going to want to build, uh, uh, well, and then we're going to want to move to step one. And the first uh, thing to do in step one is to build that Taylor polynomial centered at the current time step that we have computed, which is t0. So again, a, a lot of this information is already in hand. x of 0 is just x of 0, which you already know is 1. x prime of 0, we can get from the ODE. It's uh, minus x squared plus t, and of course, uh, when uh, uh, t is 0, we have minus x sub 0 squared plus 0, well t 0, but t 0 is 0, x 0 is 1, so we just get minus 1 here. x double prime of 0, I used my formula for the second derivative that we had uh, seen before, and plug in the t 0 and x 0 values that I know here, which are t0 is 0, x0 is 1, and so we'll get 3 for the second derivative there. So now we can form the second degree Taylor polynomial. Uh, uh, 1 plus x prime of 0, which was minus 1, times t minus t0, but remember t0 is 0 here. And then plus 1 half x double prime of uh, t0, which was 3, and then t minus t0. Remember, t0 is 0 here. So we're just getting 1 minus t plus 1.5 times t squared. And we use that then to compute our new solution point. So the new t value is our old t value plus our step size. So that's 0 plus 0.1. And our new x value is just our now second degree Taylor polynomial evaluated at the new t value. And so I'm plugging in t1 is 0.1 to that second degree Taylor polynomial, and you get this, and that uh, crunches down to 0 0.915. So we now have a new solution point, 0 0.1 and 0 0.915.
Let's go ahead and do one more step just to see how you would continue with the process. In step two, we want to build our P2 centered at our now T1, our last computed time value. So that's our point one. So to do that, we need to collect the derivative information about x at time t1. So again, uh, x itself at time 0 0.1 would just be our last computed x value. That's the 0.915 we just got. x prime at 0 0.1 we would get from the ODE. So I'm going to take that and plug in my last computed x and t values. That's x1 and t1. So minus x1 squared plus t1. Plug those values in, you get about minus 0.737. X double prime of 0 0.1. Here I need to again use that uh, formula I got for the second derivative of X. That's this guy right here. So I'm going to plug in my last computed X and T values to that. Um, and where am I? Here I am. So there's that formula. And I'm plugging in my last computed X and T values. So there you see it, grind that out, and it turns out to be 2.349 about. And so here's our second degree Taylor polynomial. Uh, X1 minus uh, the derivative uh, at X1, this guy, times T minus our center, and then plus 1 half times the second derivative at 0 0.1 times T minus 0 0.1 squared. So that's our second degree polynomial for step two. Uh, one thing that you notice here is that you do have to recompute the, the Taylor polynomial at each step because you got it, you want to recenter it. You want to recenter it at the last time value that you computed. So uh, once you've got that Taylor polynomial, you're ready to finish step two by computing the new solution point. The new t value, you just increment your old t value by the step size. So now we're going to get point two. And the new x value is you use your Taylor polynomial to project the solution forward to the new t value. So you're going to plug in the new t value to that Taylor polynomial we just computed. So that's what you're seeing here. And grind that out and we're getting about 0 0.853. Uh, uh, and now you could go on to step three. I won't do that, but the process would be the same going forward. So uh, the computed solution points we have uh, so far are here in the table, and of course we could continue that. Uh, in fact, I want to go ahead and show you uh, a few more of those that I computed and graphed using MATLAB. Uh, here is, uh, the, in blue, the uh, results of this order 2 uh, Euler method using a step size of 0.1, and I've gone ahead and computed it until time t equal 1. So uh, that's not a bad approximation right there. In fact, if you compare that to the solution that we got in our last lecture using an order 1 method, it's a lot better. This is the order 1 method with step size 0.1 that we saw last time. And clearly the order 2 method is uh, leaps and bounds uh, better. Now, uh, you know, uh, it's also possible to do order three, four, and higher methods. Uh, they get more, uh, you know, a little more computationally intense every time you up that order. And so there's ultimately a trade-off here about just the intensity of the computations uh, as you try to go to higher and higher orders. Uh, but uh, in principle, it's, it's certainly possible to do cubic and higher order Euler methods. Um, yeah, and uh, so uh, I wanted to make a point, though, about uh, the, these higher order methods that's, uh, that's kind of important. Um, let me go back to this slide. Notice that uh, I've, I've just, in this graph, I've uh, connected my computed points, the circles here, by straight lines. Uh, but really, that doesn't make much sense because the way that I computed these points was not by using straight lines, but rather by using a degree two Taylor polynomial. In fact, you know, these polynomials that we, uh, we computed along the way, uh, those are perfectly good 
not only for computing the next solution point, x2, but for computing the solution point at any time that's bigger than 0 0.1 here in this case, right? Uh, and so it makes a lot more sense to connect these points not with straight lines, but with those polynomials, those second degree polynomials that we just computed. And so when you do that, you actually give, get an interpolant for the computed solution. And I'm just writing that out here for the, the steps that we, we did in the previous slides. Here was that first Taylor polynomial of degree two centered at time t equals zero, right? And that was able to project us forward to the next solution, which was x equal 0.915. I got that simply by plugging t equals 0 0.1 into this solution, into this first interpolating function here. And then we went and computed another Taylor polynomial of degree 2, this time centered at 0.1. So that's, that's just the result we saw before. And I was able to get this uh, third solution point here by just plugging t equals 0 0.2 into this guy here. So uh, it makes sense that for values of t between 0 and 0 0.1, I should really use this function to connect the dots. And for values of t between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, I should use this function to connect the dots, and so on. So when you do that, rather than having just a connect the dots with straight lines kind of thing here, you get a, a, a nicer uh, representation of the solution. And so here I've simply used my uh, Taylor polynomials at each step to interpolate the solution between the solution steps. And you can see that not only is it, you know, sort of uh, nicer in principle, the error is actually less when you do that. I mean, if you look at, say, the error at, say, t equal 0.5, if I did a, a linear interpolation between my two uh, interpolating points, that error would be more, uh, looks like it may be even something like twice as much, as if I went ahead and used my second degree polynomial to interpolate. Uh, and so uh, there's kind of an added bonus uh, when you start looking at it this way. Not only do you get more accurate uh, solution points, those x1, t1, you know, x2, t2 values. But in addition, you get a, an interpolation scheme for the solution that's going to be more accurate than simply collecting the dots. And uh, again, that's just what you're seeing here when you use the Taylor polynomials as your interpolating functions. So that is uh, uh, higher order Euler uh, methods, uh, at least an example of them. And I want to leave you with a little practice problem. Uh, this is an ODE that you've seen in a previous homework problem. And I want to just uh, get you started by thinking about this. Suppose that after n steps, you've got a complete, uh, computed solution point, uh, a solution time Tn, and a, uh, uh, a solution value Xn. I want you to find the degree to Taylor polynomial for the solution centered at that time t equals t sub n. So this would be the analogy, what I'm asking you to do here is analogous to what we just did in the slides back, let me go find it, uh, back when we got um, this formula right here. This formula right here, uh, you can use, uh, you know, you could just come back to this formula and reuse it at whatever step you're at. Remember, we got this formula uh, by just uh, you know, collecting our, our uh, information, assuming that we had uh, a computed value of t equal tn and so on. So I'm asking you in the practice problem to uh, come up with the analogous second degree uh, formula for... Uh, this new uh, initial value problem, uh, this guy. And then once you have that, uh, use it to carry out uh, step 0, 1, and 2 of an order 2 Euler's method for this problem, just like we did uh, 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 over the last few slides uh, for our problem. So uh, give that a try, and I'll post a solution after a little bit, and then I'll have a homework problem as well for you to look at along these lines. 
uh, we, we by no means exhausted the kinds of things you can do uh, with uh, uh, Euler's method. And it's kind of a nice point, I think, in our course because we're seeing several things come together. Euler's method, Taylor polynomials, and interpolation. So it's kind of a nice uh, meeting of these techniques to give us accurate solutions of uh, ODEs that otherwise would be very difficult to solve. So I hope you're finding it interesting um, and uh, take a look at that practice problem and stay tuned. Uh, there will be more. Uh, stay well and let me know if I uh, can help you with any questions about the homework or anything else. Y'all have a good weekend and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.